Good day, everyone. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the international trade. And this is the very last topic of the applied economics. So when we say international trade, this refers to the exchange of goods and services across international borders. So nothing is new with this type of exchange as this has been in existence many centuries back then. So di ba noon, um, there is a trade no, happened like between this nation and the other nations. And even in this recent years. So in this recent period, however, nations are putting an increasing importance to international trade. So advancement in the transportation and communication network and the availability of the financial in infrastructure facilitated the flow of goods and services across the countries of the world. No? So why do countries trade? So number one is it is based on the principles of absolute and comparative advantage. So many, if not all of the countries no, have growing dependence on the international trade. So developing countries that import capital goods and raw materials have to specialize in some form of exports. For a country to be able to pay for its imports, it has to earn from its exports. Take note that in getting the net exports, it should be um, export minus import, diba? So trade has been considered as an engine of the growth with the help of the infrastructures, transportation, and even with the help of the internet, we can connect no, with the other um, countries. With more imports and exports, trade-related jobs are created. Rich and even poor countries depend no, on another countries for many goods and services they need. And here we can say that no man is an island because even communists and yung mga socialist countries like yung those isolated countries, they have realized that it cannot be absolutely self-reliant. So kailangan din nila mag-depend no, to the other countries. To have an efficient allocation of these limited resources and avoid waste, a country will certainly opt no, to obtain through trade those goods. No? It could not produce efficiently. So may mga countries na hindi nila ma-produce yung ganitong klaseng good, ano ang kanilang gagawin? So they are going to import from the other country. So that is why important talaga yung international trade. So for example, here in in Philippines, so yung rice natin, um, hindi mamit yung demand no, ng mga tao with regards to the high quality of rice. So ang mangyari, the Philippine, no, Philippines or even mga businesses, they import rice from other countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, and others. Uh, even for here in the Philippines, we cannot grow apples. And apple is one of those necessity na mga prutas. So that is why we import from Japan. no? And even mga uh, oranges, di ba? We import from there. Kasi kung ano ang wala dito, yun yung i-import natin, no? Kasi um, we have to satisfy, no? the needs of the people. And tayo din, no? mag export din tayo sa kanila. For example, yung mga top export um, products natin, we have the coconut and also the bananas no? and mga sugar canes. So, pwede natin ma-import sa other 
countries, uh, ma-export rather, pwede natin yun ma-export sa other countries. And the countries will um, process these raw materials, no inputs into a finished product. No? So, ganun. So, that is the importance of the international trade. Diba? So, kung gustuin man natin na mag-isa, we cannot um, avoid that one. Meron kasi tayong kung ano, um, in reality, countries no are not endowed no, with all the resources needed dahil din sa scarcity. Like, merong mga resources na wala tayong ganitong klase na resources or ganitong klase na products. So, kailangan natin mag-import or even other countries, walang ganitong klaseng resources or mga products. So, kailangan din natin mag-export sa kanila um, knowing the fact na meron tayong ganitong klaseng resources or products, pwede natin i-export. Diba? So, para siyang give and take principle, no? Moreover, transfer of technology, capital flows, and cheaper and wider choices of goods are some of the benefits of trade. So, hence, trade is inevitable, hindi talaga natin yun maiiwasan. And therefore, it is important to understand international trade and the principles behind it. So, what are the benefits of trade? So, we have here specialization and improve resource allocation. A country will be able to specialize only in one production of those goods which it can produce cheaply. This is the absolute advantage principle. These goods will become competitive in the world market and contain the use of its resources. So, this is one of the benefits of trade. So, meron kasi mga specialization and meron din mga improved na mga resource allocation. Another is economies of scale. So, the mass production results to lower price of goods. So, if a country specializes in the production of a good, the more of the good it produces, the lower the cost per unit that this country will incur. So, cost per unit or the average cost. Hence, ito yung mangyayari. Yung mass production, it leads to a lower price of good. And another benefit is the transfer of technology. Through joint ventures, industries will expand to other countries and they will bring with the technology used in the production, which is more often high-tech than the recipient country. For example, in the Philippines and versus Japan. Yung sa Japan, advanced talaga yung mga technology, di ba? So, may mga technology na matransfer from Japan na, matran na pwede matransfer dito sa Pilipinas, no? Para uh, ma-improve yung production natin with the use of this advanced technology. And another wider market. So, expansion of market, goods will be made available internationally. So, this will be known no, and introduced worldwide, which increases the demand no, for the good exported by a country. So, instead na dito lang domestic, lang yung target market mo, why not you are going to expand your market to other countries? So, kapag mas marami kang demand or marami ang gusto mag-avail ng goods mo, mas malaki yung kikitain mo. Diba? The wider the market, the the wider the chance no? or the wider probability of getting higher profit. Diba? Another increased consumption possibility. So trade allows a wider choice of goods and services among consumers. Since trade results in specialization, the consumers will be able to consume more quantities of a variety of goods available and thus increasing the welfare because we meet no we will we will be able to meet the needs no and wants of the people diba? and another is goodwill like fostering friendship among nations 
again no man is an island we can, we will depend no in other countries man, naman so that is why mahirap talaga no makipagera on this country kailangan talaga mayroon kang allies or dapat na mo protect sa iyo so trading no is not only a team to earn no it's not just only a way to earn but it also means no fostering good relationship among nations helping each other through aid or bolstering the economy of the country especially those who are developing countries so kung merong mga hinabang or may mga financial aid may mga countries that are willing to help you diba pero kapag if you are going to make war with the other countries na good luck no uh, at any time they can attack your country so ganyan talaga meron talaga mga allies allies no or meron tayong mga international organizations or mga association that we are that this country is engaging so that um Philippines can foster a friendship among nations. So from the benefits of trade, let's proceed with the principles of trade. So number one is the absolute advantage principle. So this is um, the general ability of a country to produce the goods using fewer resources like limited resources so meaning you you minimize the um the cost no, of the resources and you achieve here efficiency like maximizing the output um, while minimizing the resources so adam smith was the one who first described the principle of absolute advantage in the context of the international trade as simple comparison of labor productivities so it is possible for a country to have no absolute advantage in anything and therefore walang trade na mangyayari between these two countries so let's have here an example the table one shows the labor requirement in production and the principle of absolute advantage. So we have here the country A and the country B. No, so the Lawang country. So we have two products here, the car and computer. See so country B yung requirement niya per unit of output in terms of number of days is makagawa siya na, eh, ng isang car for 15 days. Then si country na, A naman is 20 days. Then si, in terms of the product computer, no, computer product rather, um, si country A is yung la labor requirement per unit of output niya in terms of days is um, the country needs 20, no, 20 labor. Then, the country B naman is um, 60. So, here, if the cost to produce is measured no, in terms of number of days to produce a good, si country A talaga yung may advantage for both computer and cars kasi fewer labor lang ang magagamit. And labor is one of the example of resources. ba? Si country B, wala siyang absolute advantage in producing the goods. Because if you're going to compare with country A, mas efficient si country A. Mas advantage si country A. So, if you are going to compare, mas maraming labor ang kailangan ni country B. So, mas malaki yung cost na ma-incure ni country B. So, therefore, mas mahal. No, yung car at saka yung computer sa country B compare to country A. Kung si country A, kung ganyan, kung ganyan yung mangyayari, he will not be able or willing, no, he will not be willing to trade with country B. No, given this um data. Kasi mas 
makatipid naman, no? Si country A, kung sa kaniyang country lang siya gagawa ng car at saka computer, di ba? Pero si country B, this, there is a possibility na mag-import siya ng car or computer from the country A. So, ang titignan lang natin sa absolute advantage is yung fewer na resources. Kasi dyan tayo makamaximize ng output. Mas efficient siya. Like we can maximize output given minimum resources. Another principle is the comparative advantage. So here, a country will specialize in the production of goods which it can produce cheaply. So mas mura in terms of the other good, like in a sense of opportunity cost. So when we say opportunity cost, this is the value no, of how much did you sacrifice this good no, for the other good or option. So compare no, to the rest of the world here. So see, David Ricardo is the one who described this principle no, as basis for Ricardian trade model. So there are actually, um, this can be actually understand no, using this example. So we have here the opportunity cost and the principle of comparative advantage. So in country A, so the labor requirement per unit of output in terms of in days is 10 for the cars, while 15 for country B. And in terms of computer, 20 kai country A, then 60 kai country B. So opportunity cost, one car is equivalent to one half computer. Then sa computer, makakagawa ng one computer equivalent to the two cars. However, in country B, um, the opportunity cost here is one car is equivalent to one fourth computer. Then one computer is equivalent to the four cars. So if the absolute advantage principle is applied, walang basis no, for country A to trade with country B because it has the absolute advantage in producing the two goods which are the cars and computer. Nakita niyo naman kanina, di ba? So, however, the result would be different here. No? The example shows no, that for country A to produce one car, it needs 10 days and therefore has to give up one half computer. For country B naman, in order to produce one car, the opportunity cost there is one-fourth of the computer. So, masasabi natin dito na si country B mas advantage siya sa car. Kasi one-fourth lang yung opportunity cost niya. Compare dito kang country A, one-half. So, mas malaki yung magiging opportunity cost, di ba? Sa country A kaysa kang B. So, mas advantage ni B. So, take note, the lower the opportunity cost, no? mass advantage under this principle. So, in computers naman, makikita natin na mas advantage si country A. Kasi sa isang computer, dalawang cars lang yung masasacrifice. Unlike in the country B, apat na cars. ba? So, in terms of computer, mas advantage si country A. Pero in terms of car, mas advantage si country B. So, take note na, uh, our basis on this um, comparative advantage, it's more on the opportunity cost. Okay? So, you see the difference between the absolute and the comparative advantage. Dito, it's more on the opportunity cost talaga. However, yung absolute, it's more on the resources. No? Okay, so what are the barriers of trade? So we have here the tariff or the custom duties. So that these are the tax imposed, imposed on the import of goods. The imposition of tariff will increase the price of imported goods. Yun yung kanang mga tax, no? Levied on those imported na mga goods. Another is we have here mga import quota. 
So this is a trade policy depending on the quantity of imports. Like, hanggang dito lang yung quota ng import. So otherwise, meron na siyang additional na payment. So ganyan yung sa import quota. Like, it based on the limit no, of quantity of imports. So meron din tayong anti-dumping rules. Diba? Kapag dumping rules, yung mga surplus ng other countries is idadump nila doon sa another country. For example, yung mga surplus sa Korea, di na dump nila in the Philippines. So because of this anti-dumping rules, no, it designed to prevent imports from entering a country if these imports are unfairly traded, like setting below the average cost. Like setting below the average cost. And another, we have export subsidies. So, government payments made to local firms to encourage exports. Kasi kapag mas mataas yung export kaysa import, mas positive yung effect niya sa GDP natin or sa economy. So, dapat talaga mas mataas yung export kaysa sa import. Kasi sa export, you are the one who sell. So, you are earning there. However, in the import, you are the one who buy. So you are spending there. So the subsidy served to keep domestic prices high, but it flooded the world market with cheap subsidized export goods. Goods that are not subsidized are driven out the international marketplace by the artificial low prices. So kailangan talaga itong mga barriers of trade, no? So, these are necessary in order to protect local or domestic businesses from the foreign competition. So, meron tayong mga different types of economic integration or mga trading blocks. So, meron tayong PTA or Preferential Trading Arrangement. So, members apply here, have lower tariffs. No, have lower tariffs to imports from each other than those um, from one from non-member countries. So, kapag yung isang country is member ng ganitong trading block, mas makakatipid sila sa tariff. Mas maliit yung tariff na mababayaran nila when they are going to export no to other countries. So, for example, we have here. Um, ASEAN, yung part sa ASEAN, and including Philippines, no? So, kapag mag export tayo sa other countries, uh, mas maliit lang yung tariff na mababayaran natin. Another, we have the free trade area. So, here, this is a type no, of integration or trading block wherein all member enjoys no tariff. Free trade. No, walang tariff, um, walang quota, walang mga barriers to entry. So this is a treaty between two or more countries to facilitate trade and eliminate the mga trade barriers. So it aims at eliminating tariffs completely from day one or over a certain number of years as long as you are member of this trading blocks. So... In this type, no, country members of the free trade area completely eliminate tariffs against each other. So they, however, still have their individual tariffs for other trading partners who are non-FTA members. So example, we have here the European Free Trade Association or EFTA. And we have also ASEAN Free Trade Area and even NAFTA. We have the North American Free Trade Agreement. So, for example, sa ASEAN, if we are going to trade to ASEAN countries, so wala tayong kuan, no? Wala tayong tariffs. So, ganun. Kasi that is part of the free trade area. And meron din tayong custom union. So, it imposed a composed of free trade area with no barriers, no tariff, and no uh, quota. 
So similar siya sa FTA. Like um, the countries or member countries can freely trade with each other without barrier. So in addition, they all have a common trade policy with regards to trade no, with non-member um, non partners. So for example, meron tayong Benelux, no, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, and the European Customs Union. Then another, we have the common market. So parehas din siya sa co custom union that um, all member countries, they can trade with each other without tariff or quota and even mga barriers to trade. Pero meron silang common trade policies with non-member countries. So here, um, the members eliminate ng mga internal trade barriers, adapt common external trade barriers. So, dapat kung ano talaga yung na-agreement no, with this trading, yun talaga sundin nyo. So, for example, labor among member countries. Meron tayong example dito. We have Mercosur, no? Mercosur rather, or Southern Cone Market. Then, meron din East African Common Market and West African Common Market. So, yung mga countries nga part sa ganitong trading blocks they have one no um they have they can trade no freely among their members so example din yung european union diba isa din yan sa example so another is the economic union so members eliminate internal barriers Adopt common external barriers, follow free movement of resources, and adopt a uniform set of economic policies. So, kung ano talaga yung economic policies or agenda, dapat yun talaga yung i-adopt ng uh, member ng union na ito. So, this type includes all the features no, of the common market. In addition, yung, meron lang siyang addition no, that there is a unification like parehas talaga yung kwa nila economic policies no so this can be both monetary or fiscal policy so throughout all member countries so this is also involves the use no of common currency so bakit common lang yung currency one currency lang kasi they adopted one monetary policy so example dito is we have um european union and the highest body, which is the European Commission. If you notice, nasa European Union, yung currency nila is Euro. So, parehas lang. Because they adopted one monetary policy. That is more on the economic union. So, those are the different types of economic integration or the trading blocks. Then, we have here the World Trade Organization. This is the only global um, international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. So this is actually the heart, no? No, ang yung heart niya is yung mga agreements among its members, negotiated and signed by the bulk of the world's trading nations and ratified in their parliaments. So, yung goal ng WTO is to help producers of goods and services uh, as well as exporters and importers to conduct their businesses. So, just a brief history of WTO. Una is nag-succeed siya uh, with the General Agreement on Tariff and Trade or yung GATT. So, this was established after the um, World War II, no? So this multilateral um, trading system no, was developed through a series of trade negotiations from 1947 after the World War II until 1994 and was concluded in the eighth round and known as the Uruguay Round in 1994. So there are countries no, nga gipang 
So during these years, that was the only forum for negotiating lower customs, duty rates, and other trade barriers on goods, and laid down important rules of trade, particularly on non-discrimination. So here, the World Trade no, Organization has its birth in 1995. So, dyan na nagsimula yung WTO. And it was institutionalized, no? So, it is the only international organization which deals with the rules of trade between trading nations. So, the agreements under the GATT were revised to become the WTO agreement. So, from GATT, nagiging WTO na siya. So, these agreements were negotiated, signed, and ratified by the world's trading nations. So the main objective of the WTO is to promote freer, smoother, and faster flow of goods across the countries. So meron ding mga further agreements na nag-reach no, in 1997 for wider liberalization measures on telecommunication services, yung mga tariff-free trade, or my informational technology products and other my financial services deal. So there, these are the different functions of the WTO. Ito yung mga different functions ng WTO. So in order to achieve the objective of a freer and fairer trade. The WTO is responsible in administration of trade agreements, serving as forum of trade organizations, the settlement for trade disputes. Kung may mga problema, um, pwede mag-settle mag si WTO. And even reviewing national trade policies and assisting developing countries in trade policy issues. Yan yung isa sa mga functions ng WTO. So they can assist developing countries through the provision of technical assistance and training programs. So meron sila mga training programs. So and another function is working and cooperating with other international organizations. So take note that when the WTO was created, the original GATT agreements were revised to become the WTO agreements. And this considers five important areas. We have the trade in goods, trade in services, intellectual property rights, dispute settlement, and national policy review. So sa trade in goods, the updated no, GATT, is the WTO's umbrella agreement for trade in goods. It has annexes no, that deals with specific sectors such as agriculture, textile, and with specific issues such as trading, product standards, subsidies, and actions taken against the dumping. No? So, then yun sa mga trade in goods, like those tangible goods. Another is we have trade in services, like here, take note that the objective of WTO is to achieve free and fairer trade that originally only applied to trade in goods, no? So here, that objective may apply in terms of trade in services. Like mga banks, insurance firms, telecommunications, companies, tour operators, hotel chains, and transport companies looking to, the, to do business abroad can now enjoy the same principles of freer and fairer trade that originally only applied to the trade in goods. So here... Um, with the principles under the new General Agreement on Trade and Services or GATS, no? yung mga WTO members have also made individual commitments stating which of their services, no, sectors, are willing to open to foreign competition and how open 
those markets are. So this is more on the trade in services. Then yung intellectual property. So the provision of intellectual property rights or intellectual property rights provided no, the rules for trade and investment in ideas and creativity. So kailangan talaga siya ipa-patent, no? So the rules here are stated how copyrights, patents, trademarks, mga geographical names used to identify products, mga industrial designs, integrated circuit, um, layout designs, and undisclosed information such as trade secrets, intellectual property, no, should be protected, especially when trade is involved. Kasi may mga others is ikakapi nila, no, yung idea mo. So, imbis ikaw yung nakakauna, so kinopya ng iba. So, kailangan protektahan yung uh, property rights, mga intellectual properties. Then, another is dispute settlement. Hindi naman talaga maiwasan na may disputes among the members, no? So, ito talaga yung pinaka-crucial na function ng WTO. Yung pagsisettle ng mga disputes between the trading partners. So, as such, the WTO agreements provide the rules and procedures for resolving trade. So, importante talaga yung and yung procedures, di ba? Especially in... Settle in, set, in settling the disputes no, among the members or mga disagreements. So the procedure under the dispute settlement no, is very important talaga for WTO to enforce the rules and therefore ensure that trade flows smoothly. So when countries feel that their rights as provided in the agreements are being violated, so they have the right no, that they can raise the issues to the WTO. So that is a very good um, ko ano, um, agreement. So judgments by specially appointed independent experts are based on the interpretation of the agreements and individual countries commitments so ito it's pro, it promotes no this promotes um settlement by consultation no if hindi pa rin madala sa consultation like if the consultation fails the country can resort to a process carefully mapped out which includes no the possibility of a ruling by panel of experts so, do na talaga sa panel of experts and the chance to appeal the ruling on the legal grounds. So, yan. Ito talaga, crucial talaga to na, um, kana, crucial siya na procedure, no? Sa WTO. Ito yung crucial na function niya. Yung magsisettle ng mga disputes. And lastly, we have the policy review. Importante talaga to. So, the provisions on trade policy review mechanism in WTO agreement are necessary to improve transparency like accessible information and to create greater understanding of these policies that countries are adopting. So, para maintindahan talaga and to assess the impact no, of these policies. Kasi lahat naman talaga ng policies may drawbacks, di ba? So many members also see the reviews as constructive feedback on their policies. So may, kung merong mga kailangan i-revise or kailangan i-improve sa policy, so kailangan talaga siya na ikuan, no? i-recommend no, for policy revision. So all WT TO members no, must undergo periodic scrutiny, each review containing reports by the country concerned and the WTO secretariat. So, yan talaga yung essence ng policy review. Kasi there are policies that can cause disadvantage to some of the members or can benefit po the WTO na mga members. 
So all of these are the parts no, of the agreements of the w, among the top WTO members. So I think this ends about the international trade and a brief introduction about the the World Trade Organization or the WTO. So once again, a pleasant day to everyone.